Hi everyone, thank you for stopping by and sharing a couple with me. Hopefully you will enjoy what I've got to show you today. Some things I've been working on, um, some things that I also have planned and some new fabrics are on their way. And also a quick reminder about tonight's bespoke box. Uh, the Avonlea launch is happening at 7 p.m. So mark that on your uh, alarm clocks if you're here in Australia. And I know a lot of people over in the uh, Northern Hemisphere have to remember that we are a good day ahead as well. So yeah, just a quick reminder for that. And I hope you will all love what I have got in those boxes. I have really enjoyed putting that together. A bit of nostalgia there around the novel that was one of my favorites growing up as well the Anne of Green Gables theme. So I find it really exciting putting together the uh, treats in the boxes that kind of match the theme. I think it really is a lovely thing to do to work on the aesthetic. Now with that whole 19th century appeal to the novel, I think you're going to really enjoy uh, the things that I have got put together in the box and the inspo for the pattern as well. I've really enjoyed making that one. So, and stay tuned for that because I always end up showing the box a couple of weeks after it's been sent out. Just so you guys that have missed out will get the chance to see what was inside. This month we've bumped up the numbers a little bit more as well, but we are still around the 50 mark, so they will go very, very fast. So good luck with that tonight. Um, I'm just having a quick cup up. My favorite Madame flavor teas. This is um, the green tea pear and jasmine. It's really nice and refreshing. It's something a little bit different. Um, yeah, so I need to warm up because it's absolutely freezing here. Uh, I know that you guys in the Northern Hemisphere will laugh about that because we, to us, it's cold. Down here in Melbourne, we are probably the coldest part of Australia, uh, other than you know places like uh, Canberra and Tassie, of course. But this weather, this whole week has been just awful, drizzly, cold, rainy. You know, you're looking at around 10 degree mark each day. But the thing that we are not used to is those gray skies that are hovering and they just won't shift that drizzle. Um, it's really unusual because most of the time here in Australia, you will get, the, you know, your cold, blustery and windy rainy days, but you'll always get a bit of sun breaking through. But we haven't had it this week. And I'm, it just feels really um, kind of depressing and it uh, really does affect your mood. Um, the only good thing I find is it does make me feel like sewing up some cosy and cuddly and snuggly things because I end up going through the wardrobe and looking for those layering pieces. So I'm going to show you a few things that I have um, in mind to start making. And before I do that, this, what I'm wearing today, was the Aaliyah shirt and this was the pattern that was showcased in the May Harvest Moon box. I was really surprised how much, like I knew you guys would love the fabric because the colors are just outstanding. Um, but the actual check fabric, it's not my usual style. So when I chose it, I just thought this is a bit of a risk, but I think we need to chop and change the whole appeal of the box each month and have something really unique and different. And so that you guys will keep, keep up the uh, whole mystery kind of thing. If we keep the same fabrics and prints each month, it can become quite boring. So I want to keep the excitement and the changeability of the boxes happening so you guys will all get excited and really not know what's in store. Um, but I love this fabric. It kind of feels like it's kind of a soft, really soft, um, kind of thick cotton, uh, not a brush flannel. It's more like a gauzy texture. So it's really, really soft and light, the weave, but warm. Uh, and I love wearing it layered with um, some cardigans and coats that I've got. But the Aaliyah, I've just said, found a th straight thread. Do you guys often find that you're in such an eager uh, way to get the Me Maids on that you forget to go back through and snip off all the threads? I tend to do that. Um, and I'm loving lately having sleeves with elastics. I know it might be a bit of a lazier way to finish off a shirt, but the fact is when you have that nice billowy sleeve and you do put the elastic in the casing, it's so practical when you can just roll the sleeves up um, you know, if you're doing things like dishes or, you know, you're wearing a jacket that you might want to alter your sleeves underneath, it's really a lot sort of easier and comfortable, but I'm loving the elastic around the sleeves. Um, this pattern, the Marsha style pattern, she is a Queenslander. So another great Aussie that I have tried to showcase the patterns for. I think a lot of you went on to purchase the pattern with your special discount code. And also the fact is there's so many variations on this particular pattern. It was a collab between Marsha Style and So La La, which is a German pattern company. So this pattern comes in German and in English, but all the variations make it such a wonderful basic pattern to have in the stash. So you can make it in a blouse, you can make it with or without collar, 
with or without pockets. You can make it in a dress version. You can make it with a tie. You can do it with you know, short sleeve, long, sleeveless. You can make a straight sleeve or a billowy sleeve. Uh, there are just so many different variations you can do. It's like having about 10 different patterns in one. So I would love to make a dress version in this shirt pattern. I'm actually really uh, inspired to make some kind of more neat looking dresses, like some long line, maybe kind of midi or just below the knee shirt dresses, but ones without the bulk um, so that I can showcase a really lovely fabric. Uh, and I know I asked you guys, a lot of you had put in input on what you think I should make for my 50th. I'm actually starting to turn a corner. I've chosen the fabric. I am going to go with the... Um, Oh, I've got it right behind me, of course. The uh, Cheetah Lily fabric. I think this was a unanimous. Most of you all picked this because look at the colour. It's amazing. And I think it will really make a statement um, for making a really lovely dress for my 50th. And I've actually taken the liberty of ordering some little leopard print shoes, kind of like little kitten heels with the Mary Jane style kind of strap across. So I just thought... I can't resist that because a pair of black tights, sort of woolen tights with um, those little shoes should look really, really cute. Um, but the dress pattern itself, I keep changing my mind. That is on the plans to make for my birthday dress. Um, what else have I been up to? Well, I've got a really lovely um, fleece, the brush fleece here from Spotlight. I think it was about a year or two ago I got this now. And I wanted a cuddly, snuggly sweater to throw on in the morning when it's really cold. You need something toasty to wear. And the unwind sweater is such a fast, easy sew, especially good for beginner sewers. Um, and I think it's something that you can really adapt. She's got versions of hoods as well as funnel necks and just the regular old uh, round neck and mum actually made one in that cuddle fleece knit that I had uh, online store I have just restocked that we've also got the uh, so we've got the caramel color the strawberry milk there's a bit of the spearmint and that's what mum used to make her unwind sweater it's come up really really lovely and toasty uh, and also I've just got some cornflower blue color in there as well so that's really exciting um, so that's on the cards to hopefully make today because I need some new snuggly goods I'm not sure if that fabric is still in spotlight it's quite old now but yeah definitely go ahead and have a look and see if they've got that you can see the old the whole uh cheetah cheetah thing is happening with me lately I know what's happened there but the uh the animal print uh is really appealing to me lately um the other thing I wanted to make was the Nina cardigan from Starlight Patterns that is a real favourite of mine. I made it last year, maybe. No, maybe it was the year before, actually, in a, in a Tazuti really fine knit. Um, and that was a really simple cardigan, but it's got a lovely fit around the middle and actually has that waterfall drapey effect at the front. So I love that, uh, that pattern. And I actually want to make that in the Angora wool blend that I've got on my online store. This is that golden ash colour. This comes in the silver birch, which is a lovely soft gray and in a mulberry color as well. But I really love that color. I don't have much in a way of layering pieces in that kind of goldeny mustard, like a toffee color, not a bright, bright mustard, but just that nice kind of golden leaf color. I, I think it is exactly like the golden ash uh, leaf on my trees out the front in, in autumn. Um, that color reflected there but I think it will work well because it's got a bit of drape it's not overly uh, like as far as vertical stretch goes you don't really need that it's more that the horizontal stretch is yeah there's quite a lot of stretch in that but as long as it sits nice and it has a little bit of drape I think that will work really really well um, look cardigans are so many different um, versatile cardigan patterns out there you've got your free pattern the Harper cardigan that everyone loves from Sinclair patterns which I am yet to make do have the pattern already printed out so that's what I want to make I was thinking about a shirt dress pattern and now I'm starting to think maybe I should make something a little bit more uh, maybe that kind of knee to midi length but not so voluminous like as far as having tears and um long and floaty I'm actually thinking of making the Valerie dress from forget-me-not patterns 
I've seen it on so many people uh, and I love the new sleeve hack they've got with that kind of billowy elasticated sleeve. I love the raglan sleeve. I think, I think it really looks lovely. It fits so many different body types. I really love the thought that Jo's put into her pattern. She puts a lot of detail as far as things that reflect. Um, she's put the raglan sleeve and the angled pockets and it really just um, kind of reflects each other. Those different style lines I think really work well. So I'm, yeah, I'm kind of excited to maybe make a twirl in that pattern. Also really love the look of the Clementine pattern she's got on there with the princess seams. That's in a knit fabric. Um, so I may be getting some ponties in very shortly as well for the online store. And I'm really excited to be able to have gotten hold of some viscose ponty, which I think is just such a lovely quality for making all sorts of garments. Um, I've just finished watching Alex Judge's latest episode where she's made some pull-on pants in some viscose ponty and they just looked amazing. So I actually, um, I'm thinking maybe making myself some of those now because it's nice to get a bit of inspo, isn't it? To see what other sewers are making and really makes you realize what you need in your wardrobe and what you like to sew. Um, yep, so the viscose ponty will be on its way. But yeah, definitely thinking about that or even the Trini. I know a lot of you loved the Trini pattern from uh, Starlight Patterns. That was another one that you were all voted for. But look, it's very, very hard making decisions. Other pattern that I have on the cards to make is the Be Mine Cardigan from Ali and Mac. And I like that because it's got like kind of a little bit of a frill happening around the middle. So you can kind of have that um, gathered effect. Um, and also it looks really nice done in a vest if you like a good layering piece. You can do it without the sleeve and wear it kind of like a long vest um, over a lovely long skirt. I think would work really well. I'm really feeling the need to make some nice knit skirts um, and some like two-piece sets. Um, I think that worked really well when you're wearing like a sweater knit underneath or maybe a knit and you want to wear a scarf and you can kind of have those layering pieces. It looks really lovely with long line boots as well. So that's another one I'm wanting to make. Other thing I want to make is um, this beautiful cotton check from Cloth Edit. Gabrielle sent me quite some time ago now. I'd, I'd love to make one of these in the Aaliyah shirt, which I've got on right now. Um, maybe even the Mandarin style collar. Um, but I'm so happy with this pattern. And now that I know the size and everything works really well for me, I think that would work really well in the wardrobe for layering as well. Um, so I am getting some coating fabrics coming very soon in the online store and I do want to start getting my teeth into some coat making so I'm going to be putting together an episode uh, shortly on some maybe some coat inspo. I've seen quite a lot of inspiration on uh, Instagram. There's a great uh, stylist that I watch uh, on Instagram called Melissa Got Style. She's an Aussie. She's actually from Melbourne. She shows you how to put together a lot of different looks um, and what kind of lines work well on the body. Also different things like you know trench coats and overcoats, how to pair them back and even different color combinations that work really well. So it's really nice to have that bit of inspiration there to kind of guide you if you're a bit lost and if you're like me and you have just, you know, so many different bright colors because, you, you know, the color just appeals to you, it is nice to see what pairs back and what you can mix and match. But I'm really trying to have things that will blend in with each other in the wardrobe um, because I do love a good coat. And I also love good knit coats and cardigans. So cardigans are really important, um, as are, I would like to make um, some knits like coatigan style patterns as well because they're comfortable. They give you that kind of look of a coat uh, without being overly sort of dressed up. So uh, there are a few things that I have in mind for some inspo for you guys hopefully coming very soon. So they're the things I've got in mind to make. The other thing I wanted to show you was some fabric. Now the, the pattern I have wanted to make for quite some time was Jane's pattern. It's from the dressmaker's closet, the Ava blouse with that beautiful tie front. It's a really versatile looking pattern if you like kind of a pussy bow style but you don't want to have um, anything too sort of hyper in the neck. It's a nice in-between style for that. So what I've got picked out for that is this beautiful um, fabric from the online store. And it is the Walk on the Wild Side. Um, it's a like a crepe fabric. It's a really amazing print. Now you can see the whole theme happening with, <laughs> with the leopard print because I, I just was attracted to this fabric as soon as I saw it. I thought you guys would love it. I love the splash of red in it. So I really want to make a red coat this winter. But I want to show you this fabric up close. This um, is just a stunning. And you can see it's not 
too sheer. It's not like a chiffon or a georgette. It's a little bit thicker than that. So it's a bit more opaque. Um, but the print, the shoes are just amazing. So I think with a pair of black pants or even a pair of jeans, that um, that Ava blouse should come up really lovely in that. So it's quite a lot of drape in that. But it's really, really soft, this fabric, and it's got a lovely kind of weight to it. So it's not the lightest crepe or chiffon out there. It's more of a it's more of a crepe to sheen feel, but without that silky, shiny side. It's really unusual. But I have that in my online store, and I just thought I'd love to show you guys a bit of inspo because it's one of those fabrics I've chosen just thinking I knew exactly what I wanted to make with it, being that kind of pussy bow style blouse. And there's so many different blouses out there. It's just really hard to know what to choose. But I would love to show you guys some inspo with that and see how it comes up. So I'd love to hear what you guys have been up to, what you've been sewing this week. Let me know in the comments. I know a lot of you over in the Northern Hemisphere are really starting to warm up. There's a lot of you uh, going on holidays as well. Um, if you'd like to look back through the catalogue, I have got a, a dress episode with my favourite summer dress makes. It's one of my most popular, most watched vlogs and I do a lot of quick changes and a lot of those dresses are still firm favourites of mine. I have kept them. Um, but there's so many different things now that I feel that my wardrobe has gaps for and I think the more that you make and the more that you sew you realize what you enjoy sewing and what you most of all what you enjoy wearing as well. I've been reading the book the Esme Young book which is um, the from the Great British Sewing Bee. Uh, Esme uh, tells her life story so I'm about three chapters into that so really enjoying that. Uh, last week we went and saw uh, the Top Gun movie Maverick and that was a trip down memory lane as well because a lot of you I would remember the first one. I remember being a teenager and seeing that and we ended up taking mum to see uh, the Maverick, which we really, really enjoyed. Um, and also I love the look of the new Elvis movie that's coming out, the Baz Luhrmann movie. It looks fantastic. So that's really exciting. Uh, a lot of those kind of movies can give you a bit of inspo for sewing as well. Uh, and I know that Esme Young did say in her book that she has done a lot of different um, sewing for different movies and that one of them being the Bridget Jones's diary, the little Playboy bunny suit that she made for Renee Zellweger in that she was behind a lot of that couture sewing in uh, making those movies. So it's really interesting to see all the talent these people bring to the movie sets I think is just amazing. So what an incredible job that would be to work on a film set and be making um, like different costumes and period drama costumes as well I think is just incredible. Now, anyone here in Australia I hope you are all keeping warm if you're down especially down here in Melbourne and don't forget tonight at 7 p.m those bespoke boxes will be launched so hopefully you'll um, try and manage to get yourself one of those because I can't wait to show you what's inside them so it's very very exciting. So take care everyone have a great day whatever it is you're doing and hope you get some sewing in and we'll see you all soon. Bye for now.